6 p.m. Uh, Brother James Watkins will be our guest speaker tonight, so we're looking forward to that. Hope you'll come out and, and support him. Uh, don't forget Wednesday night, there will be no Awanas this week due to Thanksgiving uh, week. So uh, in preparation for Thanksgiving, we give you Wednesday night off. Uh, we will be back the week after, though. And upcoming events, don't forget children and youth Christmas play practices this evening at 5 p.m. And all the kids need to be here for that. Uh, our Lottie Moon Christmas offering goal is $1,300 this year. And as of this morning, we have $1,175. So only $125 short of our goal. So hopefully we'll get that in. Uh, don't forget in December the 12th uh, is our annual thanks Thanksgiving Christmas dinner. It'll be after the morning worship service and the business meeting to follow. So hope you'll be here for that. And the youth play is entitled A Christmas to Believe In, and that will be presented here December the 19th at 6 p.m. And I hope you'll all come out and support our kids in that. It's going to be a good play and a good message. So that's what's important. Any other announcements that need to be made this morning? In our Sunday school hour, we had 29 in attendance, an offering of $51. We had 78 contacts turned in and 18 daily Bible readers. So we appreciate your attendance in Sunday school. We invite you to come if you haven't been coming and join us at 9.45 each and every Sunday morning. Uh, I'd like to recognize those who have had a birthday in the past week. Everybody have a birthday? Uh-oh.
sing one more to get him to look out. Calvary, 138, 138, I had Mark Liz, that fell out, I don't know, him, but good, so that Calvary, let's sing all four verses, uh, I love this, this song, uh, the list of the word, we sing all four
Lord, we thank you for allowing me to be behind this sacred desk one more time, God. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would forgive me of any sin, God, Lord, that would hinder this message, Lord. And I pray, God, that, that you would speak through me, Lord. I pray that you'd make it easy to, to, to speak, Lord, to speak through me. Uh, God, I pray this be a will ministry for you, Lord. I pray for the last message ever preached, Lord, and be found faithful, God. I pray today, God, just thank you, Lord, through it all. Lord, we know, uh, Lord, today as Christians, Lord, it's not all uh, easy, God. We know uh, there's going to be persecution, there's going to be trials, there's going to be tribulations, but we know through you, God, we have uh, the source of strength, God. Lord, thank you that we can rejoice in you. And I pray today, God, that as we look to this message you've laid in my heart, God, we take the heart. Uh, God, to just be thankful. God, thanking you, Lord, for all that you do. Again, we just give y'all praise. It's, it's you. And I pray today, if there's anybody in the sound of my voice that is just calling to be saved today, God, that you would just give them the courage and obedience to your, to your calling, Lord. And I pray today, uh, again, if there's a Christian here, God, that, that needs to just come to you and, and, and repent of sin, anything in their life, God, just like that song, Lord, whatever it is, it's just keeping them. Lord, forgive me all of you. I pray today that they live on the old fashioned altar. And God, we just give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 But we see here in, in a back here, we talked about his, his, the book means, uh, his name means love, embrace. We see that the book actually opens with gloom and doom. And, and it ends here in, in, with glory, as we see in these last three verses. And uh, in a back, uh, if you want to look at this book, it's a big why. And I know a lot of times, uh, you know, we can't help but ask why. Y'all ever done that before? You know, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Uh, and, and Habakkuk was there. You know, there was some uh, whys that he had. And, and one of the things that, that the question he had uh, was, why does God permit evil? You know, why does he do that? And that's, that's a question for every mind, I'm sure, that is faced. And, and the question also may be, you know, is God doing anything? Is God doing anything? Well, the, the book uh, that we're seeing says he is. Uh, the theme is faith. We see also the, the prophet, he is a prophet of faith. You can even look at, at Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 where it mentions, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. We can even see in Romans chapter 1, verse 17. It says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, that is written, the just shall live by what? Faith. By faith. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, it says, But that no man is justified by the law of the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by what? Faith. We even see in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 38. It says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Faith. Hebrews 11, verse 1. It says, Now the, the faith, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if you look at the word faith in the Greek word, it's, it's P I S T I S, I guess how you say that. But it talks about being in conviction of the truth of God. It's reliance upon Christ for salvation. It also talks about being assured. It talks about belief. It talks about believing. And also it even comes up with a legal term that just says resting in the facts. You know, that's the thing about it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We just got to rest on those facts. Amen? And just like faith here, we just got to rest in the fact of what God has done for us to live by faith. And, and we know that the book is written against the backdrop of, of judgment, apostasy, all of these things, and, and they actually went through some difficult hardships. It was also during a time when Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, uh, he led people back into idolatry. He is leading them away from the Lord, and the result is, is God preparing to judge the nation. Now Habakkuk here, he's having trouble with this and, and understanding uh, that God would use a, a heathen nation like like the Babylon like Babylon to punish his people. And, and one question he had is why doesn't God just purge their sins and draw them back to himself? Well, like Job, uh, again, he argued.
argues his case, but in the end he realizes God is not to be worshipped merely because of temporary, material, uh, physical blessings, but simply because who he is. Amen. And I know Job, even I made reference to him, if we look in Job chapter 13, verse 15, uh, this is something Job even said. He said, though he slay me, yet I will trust him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Though he slay me, though he slay me. All, you know, and even when we're talking about although, although and yet, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Think about that kind of faith that Job had. Lost everything he had. But yet he trusted in him. There's people in the sound of my voice this morning that have been through tough times, been through things that, that, that a lot of us, just all we can do is look and, and just uh, see their faith, see everything that they've been through, yet they're still smiling, they're still rejoicing in the Lord. And, and if we look even back to Habakkuk, you know, chapter 3, where it talks about although and yet, those are key words here. Because in your life this morning, there's an all of And there's a list of things that's, you know, again, everybody's is different, okay? Everybody's is different, all of But then I pray that everybody today can, can look at the yet. Say so yet. Although, fill in the blank. Whatever, whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever you've got going on, whatever is that, you know, that you're going through, that may be testing your faith. But I pray and say, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. In other words, mine. It's a personal thing. If you're a child of God, my salvation, the Lord God is my strength. It's mine. It's my thing. sure don't understand all that's happening, but I'm going to thank God through it all. And I know it's, it's tough at times, but we, we have a, a reason to rejoice and be joyful and, and also be trusting in His strength. The first thing we see is His, his sovereignty never changes. Amen. Now, circumstances change, but God <coughs> never does. Amen. Malachi 3 and 6, we can look there. It says, For I am the Lord, I change not. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He changes not. Even look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It talks about Jesus, the same yesterday and today and forever. We can even look at James chapter 1, verse 17. Is every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Again, he doesn't change. So this morning, as we think about his sovereignty, never changes. We read verse 17 and, and on down to verse uh, through, uh, through 19. But what is your all though? What is your all though this morning that, that you're dealing with? Well, I pray again, or yet is the same. It may not be able, you know, to be able to rejoice in your situation, and but I can rest that he is in control. Because Habakkuk, as you, if you look through the whole book, he, he kind of, he painted a bleak picture of the future. And, uh, but it looks, you know, as far as everything going on around him, but he looks to God. And, and we know that the Lord, Jehovah, it means self-existent. It means eternal. It means he's changeless. It means he's the I am. He not I was, he is I am. God is still in control. And if I believe all of this, then it actually helps me to be able to, to uh, look at, at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 and 8 through 18. If I believe this, then what it is, it's able for this to be able to become a reality in my life, and, and there's three things here. It says rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Go back to verse uh, 16. These are three things that is the will of God in our life as Christians. To rejoice evermore. 
Verse 17. Second thing is to pray without ceasing. Now when you say pray without ceasing, does that mean you're going to pray, continue to pray, and you're, you know, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? Well, if you can do that, that's fine. But pray, you got to, you just got to have that uh, spirit of prayer all the time in your life. and you Because when you talk about Say kids texting all the time or always on social media or these type of things. You don't mean they're on there. Well, I guess they are sometimes. <laughs> but uh, but you, you're, you're, when you talk about those type of things, then what you're saying is you've got to have that constant interaction with Almighty God. Amen. And, and what Jesus has done. And then, and then verse 18, uh, it says, And everything, give thanks. Give thanks. We all... Got something to be thankful for. You know that bread you just took right there? That, that was God right there. That was his oxygen, right? He, 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 he's, we're alive and we're here and, and we're here for a reason. <clears throat> but it comes to reality and, and, and we see, as far as thinking about his sovereignty, never changes. He will always be God. He will always be God. And because of that, I can thank God through it all. Amen. Can you? Uh, we also see that his salvation says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord in verse 18. It says, I will joy in the God of my salvation. You know, things may get bad down here, but what's great about it is those things don't affect my salvation. Mm -hmm. Salvation rests solely on the grace and power of God. You know, life may be uncertain. But we know our salvation. We know that salvation is eternal. Salvation means deliverance. It means rescue. It reminds me this world is not my home. You know, he is, he is coming to rescue and deliver his children one day. If we can look at 1 Peter chapter 1. Verses 3 through 5. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and it fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Who were kept by the power of God through faith and salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now think about that for a minute too, an inheritance incorruptible. Basically that un incorruptible means unperishable. You know, if something happened and say someone died and, and say I've received an inheritance, uh, my rich uncle ain't passed away yet or nothing, so I ain't got an inheritance, but if I got an inheritance, There'd be a certain period of time where I would run through that, or if I got a house, or if I got a car, you know, it would rust away, sooner or later it's going to be gone. But think about an inheritance incorruptible. It's unperishable. And it's also undefiled. And notice it faded not away. We, we have that assurance. And, and when it goes on to say, not only that, but, but it's reserved in heaven for you. And that word reserved means. Uh, Guarantee it, it, it is reserved in heaven for you. That's something you can you can take to the bank, I guess you'd say. But to think about a lot of times when you when you rent rooms or, or condos or, or just if you're going on vacation, a lot of times what do they want ahead of time? They want a deposit or something, right? And, and uh, to be able to, to secure you know your arrangements, living arrangements. Well, the thing about this is, is it's paid in full. Amen. By Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's blood paid for this inheritance that's incorruptible. And, and I know as we we see hopes and, and we, we also go through trials, we, we talk about uh, just things in life, and I know it's tough. It really is. Um, life ain't easy. I, I promise you, uh, as pastor of, of Townley First Baptist Church, I'm not even going to tell you it's easy. It's not. We know. Uh, we know it's tough. But what I want you to see today is, as a Christian, that we have somebody that we can depend on each and every day. Amen. He's going to deliver us. He's going to rescue us. And, and this, you know, I may have an address here, uh, but I'm telling you right now, this is not my home. Heaven is my home. And it's 
only through the blood of, of Jesus Christ and thankful that it was paid in full. And, and we know that as we see in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, we see it says, Wherefore he is able, he is able, also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Whereby he is able to save them to the uttermost. That's as safe as you can get. He's going to save us to the uttermost, those that, that come to him. And, but we see that here. And, and, and as we talk about inheritance, as we talk about belongings, and you know, I may lose everything I've got here. You know, that, that's and then we sooner or later it's all gonna be burned up anyway. But I can't lose what he's given me. And he's given me my salvation, amen. You can't lose it if he's given it to you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Does it have an asterisk right there? If you live this certain life, if you're good enough, if you do that, it don't say that, does it? It says, give you eternal life. It's not about me. It's about him, right? What he's done, amen? Uh, not only is look at his sovereignty, never, never changes, his salvation never ceases. You know, we can preach on that time and time again. But we know now that his strength never collapses. And in Hebrew chapter 3, uh, excuse me, uh, we go back to the back of chapter 3, and we look at 18 again and 19. Because we talk about the Aldo, Aldo in chapter 17. It says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in, in the God of my salvation. I said, the Lord God is my strength. He is my strength. Strength talks about ability. Because our strength does not lie within us. It is what God has done. It is, it's through his strength. Even Philippians chapter 4 verses 13. I don't know if it's on there. Okay. Uh, I do all things through Christ who strengthens me. She started shaking her head at me. I, I get in a hurry back there sometimes. But to think about the strength that we can have only through him. And when we're unable to stand. Because I know. I'm sure things. You know everybody has, has been through. You know, when you're unable to stand, he's the one that, that holds you up. Mm -hmm. Amen? I mean, that, I, and I'm thankful about that. He enables us. When we can't go on, honestly, if we're being honest this morning, has there been just a time in your life when you didn't think you're going to go on? You say, man, I can't go on. But we see here, he helps us. When it talks about that he will make my feet like kind's feet. Um, notice he will make my feet like kind's feet. It speaks of, of grace. It speaks of agility. And it speaks of swiftness. Uh, you may say, what exactly does, does that mean? Well, you know, we're supposed to play the end. Amen. We're supposed to go in. And that's what it's talking about. That he'll make my feet like, like kind's feet so I can, again, flee the enemy and we know he throws arrows at us. We know he tries to do everything he can to, to not get us to, uh, to be able to, to witness, to, to accept Jesus Christ, all, all these different things. But we know as a, as a believer, uh, we have those high feet. Uh, also, it talks about high places. He will make me to walk upon my high places. And what that's talking about is, is the mountaintops where the deer is free to be able to roam, and because they're on those mountaintops, then what's below is not going to hurt them. And, and that's that's what it's talking about there. So just think about in our life, although, although we're going through all of this, all the whatever, fill in the blank. Yes. I rejoice in the Lord. I will join God in my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. How many of y'all this morning know that He's your strength? Amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Amen. I'm just glad he's your strength. And not only that, he's able to make my, my feet like kind's feet. He's able to, to uh, make me walk upon the high places, away from the danger. And, and we know uh, in a back of what he's, he, he's telling us that God enables uh, him to, to above, rise above his circumstances. You know, that God gives him the strength to stand above the battles. And enjoy the freedom we have in the Lord. And I know a lot of times when it's when it's you, uh, it's easier 
said and done, I think, sometimes. When you're going through things, and, you know, I can, I can tell you all day, hey, trust the Lord. You know, I preach it every Sunday. Trust Him. Believe in Him. You know, that kind of thing. But sometimes when it's you, it's easy for you to be worrisome or fretful. And, well, you know, it, it, it kind of gets where the rubber meets the road in your life. But I'm here to tell you this morning. Because as I know, I'm preaching just to me just like I'm preaching to you today. Although, fill in the blank. Yes, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. And today, whatever it is you're dealing with, I guarantee you, He will see you through as a child of God. If you don't know him, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what I'm, what I'm speaking to you is foreign to you because you don't know it. No, to have him is your salvation, your strength, my strength. Um, I know even the, the word rejoice, uh, if you look at the Hebrew word of that, it means to jump for joy. You ever seen anybody just jump for joy? You know, uh, just to think about rejoicing in the Lord. There, there's been times I've been through things but I didn't want to jump for joy. Did you? But Although this is going on yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. He, he is God. God sometimes turns our doubts to shouts. He, he gives peace in the midst of, of the problems. Uh, I was talking to someone this last week, going through some things. And, and uh, it's funny how when you're going through it, sometimes it's hard to see God in you, man. You know, you just, it's just like, it seems like it's you against the world. And, but then on the other side of it, sometimes you, you're able to look back and say, you know, God had his hand on me the whole time. He, he saw me through. And, and I know in, in my life, you know, all of us have been through different things. There have been times where I just didn't know where to turn, what to do, didn't feel like I was loved, didn't feel like nobody cared. Um, you may be feeling like that this morning yourself. But let me tell you today, God loves you. God loves you. Nobody's told you today to love you. Wayne Page loves you. I love you. I appreciate you being here today. I love you. <clears throat> but God loves you enough to give his only begotten son to die on the cross for your sin and for mine. Like that song at Calvary a while ago, I just I kept coming back to that, thinking about what God has done for me and for you. Why should we go through life thinking nobody loves us, nobody cares? Because God, God loves us. God cared for us. He sent His only begotten Son. I'll never love anybody like God. Loves. Nobody would. I mean, you wouldn't give up your child or grandchild. I mean, you wouldn't do it. You don't love everybody that much. But God loves you enough, again, to, to send His only begotten Son. So we can be thankful. Amen. We can be thankful. Be thankful for it through it all. In his trials, of back, he, le he learned a valuable lesson. And this is something we all can learn this morning. Is, is God is both our salvation and our song. Amen. He's the only thing we can, we can promote. He's the only thing we can, we can actually boast of. But also nothing to fear from life, but that he had every reason to thank God through it all. And then this morning, if you're saved, you have every reason, every reason to be thankful. If you're lost, God's calling you. You have an opportunity to be saved today. But I'm thankful that you have that opportunity. Um, if we were to look in Psalm chapter 107, verse 1, this will be some of the last scripture we'll share. Because I think a lot of times, you know, people go through life and, and they're longing. They're just longing for that peace that only God can give us. You know, they try to find it in so many things, so many avenues to try to fill that, that void in their life. Well, in Psalm 107, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And then as we get down to verse 9, where I wanted to end up. 
It says, for he satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with this. <coughs> he satisfies the longing soul. The only thing that's going to fill up and satisfy that spiritual thirst is the living water, which is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The only thing you're going to be able to eat that's going to fill that spiritual soul is the bread of life, which is Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the only thing that can take care of it. And today, as a believer, to think about where we're at and what God has done for us we have a lot of things to be thankful for, don't we? What God has done for us. I've got a song I want to sing off the bell, if you don't mind, and maybe we can do it. You may not even see it as I got to think about it. But uh, I, I think about this song, and I kept singing it in my mind all week long. And, and uh, you just like, I don't know if y'all can see it or not, can you at all? If not, maybe look on the back screen. But the, as a child of God, I just think about the words of this song. It says, while the world looks upon me as I struggle alone, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing, how I wish they could see. Sing it out. Here, God, and, and I pray everybody here, God, would, 
just tell the good news about your son Jesus. God, we just, I thank you for this congregation. Thank you for the visitors and everyone that's here, Lord. God, I pray you speak to our hearts. I'm not God, you are. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Keep your heads bowed as she plays. Keep on singing praise.